Hey there, welcome back. In case we haven't met yet, my name is Big, and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. Today is day number five of the 12 days of Christmas, a video series where I'll be sharing with you one new Squarespace customization tutorial every single day until December 12th. Today's tutorial is inspired by a question I got a while ago inside the club. We're going to be creating a sort of Ken Burns effect with an auto layout banner slideshow. So when the images go through, because we're we're also going to make it autoplay. When the images go through, we're going to be able to see the sort of immersive effect that combines both zoom and a little bit of movement on the image. I'm really excited to show you how you can implement this in your client projects. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So here we are on a 7.1 site and I already have the auto layout in here. So this one is the banner slideshow. So basically you can set this up however you like. There's no specific settings that you need to use. Just make sure that you have banner slideshow enabled in here and you're all set. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to make this autoplay. So I already have a little script that we're gonna be using to be able to make that happen. So I'm going to go in here into settings, code injection, and then in the footer, I'm just going to paste the script and I'm going to walk you through what it does. Now, keep in mind that for this script to work, you need to have the jQuery library on your site, which simply means that you need to have this little script that you see in here or something similar. Sometimes it says ajax.googleappy. So if you're already working with plugins or any sort of, sort of heavier customizations on your site, chances are you already have one of these links in there. If you do, you don't need to add a new one. If you don't, make sure to grab this one from the code that comes with this tutorial. All right, so once you have that in there, it's just a matter of adding in the little script. So I'm going to paste that in here in the footer and I want to tell you what this is doing. So what this is going to do is it's going to run this function a specific amount of time that we're going to set down here. So this is in milliseconds. Right now I have this set to 5,000, which means that every five seconds, what I have here is going to happen. So basically what is going to happen is that the browser is going to look for the user items list, a banner slideshow arrow button, right? So this button that we have down here in the auto list, and it's going to click on it every five seconds. Like that's literally what this is doing. And then this little snippet that we have in here, or this additional selector that we have in our list of selectors is just to make sure that that button doesn't get clicked when we're on edit mode, when we're trying to edit the page, because otherwise things become a little bit annoying with the click you get clicked out of certain things inside the editing mode. So it's a little bit annoying. So to avoid any of those issues, we just have that sort of exception in there so that the code does not apply when we're editing the site. So with this little script in place, let's go ahead and save it and take a look at what happens. So right now you're going to see that while I'm not in the actual edit mode, everything just starts working correctly. So we have every five seconds, that button gets clicked automatically for us and we have this set on a loop. Now, one thing to keep in mind about this is that if you want to have an infinite loop, you need to make sure that you have the infinite looping option enabled. So in here in edit content, in the content, no, sorry, the design tab, in here, make sure to have infinite scrolled enabled to be able to go through each of the slides just over and over and over again. If you have this disabled, then the script is just going to work until it reaches the last slide. And then there's just not going to be more slides to click on. All right. And that's pretty much it for this first part. Now let's go ahead and move on to the fun part, which is going to be to actually create that sort of Ken Burns effect. So to be able to create the Ken Burns effect, we're just going to use a little bit of CSS. What we want to do here is we want to change the zoom and the position of the image that we're seeing on the active slide. So because we just want that to happen on the screen, so on the slide that we're looking at to be able to get the full effect, we need to make sure that we're targeting those visible slides. So the first thing that we need to do is look at what difference the HTML carries depending on if the slide is showing or if it's hidden. So let's go ahead and take a look in here. And I'm actually going to stop the autoplay for a second because it's going to be easier to see the HTML that way. Let's just stop that. And there we go. All right. So here inside the inspect element tool, let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so I landed directly on the UL element that if we open up, you can see how it carries each of the different slides 
for this auto layout. So we have each of them being an LI element in here. Now, if we take a closer look at each of the slides, we can see that we have a couple of classes. We have slide and list item. And you can see how those classes are the same regardless of the slide that we're standing on. In terms of style, we have a couple of differences, especially regarding the transform property. You can see how this one has a translate 3D set of zero because we have it here on the screen. And then this one has a minus 9,999 pixels for the X axis and this one too and this one too. You can see how these ones are out of the screen. Now we're not really going to be using a style to be able to target the visible slide because there's something else in here that we can use. So apart from the classes and the style attribute, we can also see that we have another attribute and this one is called data is card enabled true, but that one is also present in all of the other slides. The one that isn't present is this one that's called area hidden equal true. So you can see how this little attribute with the true value is only present on the slides that we're actually not seeing on the screen. So right now, if I were to click here, and change the slide and then go back into the inspect element, you can see how here now for that first slide, I do have area hidden set to true. But now for the second slide, that attribute is not even showing in here. So that is the slight difference that we have in between the slide that we're seeing on the screen and the ones that are waiting for their turn. So because of how we want to create that can burns effect, what we want to do is we want to always target the slide that does not have the area hidden true applied, which means that is the visible slide. So let's go ahead and set up the selector to target that. I'm going to go ahead and grab here the list item class because that is the class that all of these slides have in common. So I'm going to go into design and custom CSS and I'm going to add that little class in there. Now, I don't want to keep it the way it is right now because I don't want to target any other list item on the site. I just want to target the ones within this banner slideshow or any banner slideshow that I have on the site. So let's do a quick search here for another class that helps me target list items only within banner slideshows. So if I go all the way up here to one of the parent containers, we can see that there's a class called user items list banner slideshow, which is perfect because it means that it's going to help us tell our browser that we're targeting list items within this type of auto layout. So I'm going to grab that, include it in my selector, and now we're good to go. Okay, so like I said, we don't want to target all list items. We just want to target the one that is currently visible, which means that is the one that it doesn't carry this data attribute or area hidden attribute in this case. So let's go ahead and copy all of this. And instead of targeting list items that do have that, which would be this way, we're going to create an exception. We're going to target the list items that do not have that particular attribute and value combo. So by having our selector this way, we're only going to be targeting visible slides. Now let's go ahead and focus on the actual effect. So to create a Kim Burns effect is fairly simple. What we need to do is change the scale of the image and we need to change the position of the image. So instead of targeting the whole item itself, because I don't really want to see any gaps or anything happening, I'm going to be targeting the image within that particular visible slide. So let's take a look in here once more. And then I'm going to go onto my visible slide, which is this one. And then here we have two containers. So we have the slide media container and we have the slide content container. So you can see, let me move this. You can see here that the slide content corresponds to the text here, which we're not really interested in modifying in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and focus on the other one, slide media container. If we open this up, we can see that in here we have our image element. Now this one, it does have a class of list slideshow image that we could use, but I actually think I'm just gonna go with the image element for this one to target that and use that as my target container. All right, so now I'm targeting the image element that is sitting inside the visible list item within banner slideshows. And now that I have this very specific so I can tell my browser what I'm going to target, we can go ahead and set up the actual effect. So I'm going to be using here transform and I'm going to be doing two things. I'm going to change the scale of the image. I want it to be slightly bigger. So I'm going to set this to 1.1 1 .1. 
and I also want it to move slightly downwards. So I'm going to set here translate Y. Um, let's do something like maybe 50 pixels. I don't want this to be a really big number and I would suggest you don't use a big number because the problem is that if the image, even though we're scaling it, if the image is a little bit smaller and the distance that you're moving it downwards or upwards, if you're using a negative number, you may see a gap. So if you keep it to a fairly small number, you're still going to get the effect, but you're not going to get any gaps happening at the top or at the bottom of the image. Now, right now, if we were to try this out, you can see how we can't really see the effect. It's too blunt. It happens too suddenly. So we can't really see what is going on. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of a transition. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be targeting these images, but I want to target all of them. I don't want to target just the one that is set to visible because I want to make sure that the transition applies when this goes from hidden to visible. So I'm going to remove this exception here to make sure that I'm targeting all of the list items. And I'm going to set a transition of, let's say, I just want to animate the transform for maybe like 10 seconds. Yeah, something like that. So now if I click here, you can see how during 10 seconds, look at that effect happening, which looks amazing. And then if we go into the next slide, the same thing happens. So we get that transition going from where the thing is hidden to when it becomes visible. And because it's a fairly long amount of time, then you can see how everything just moves smoothly towards you. And now let's go ahead and try this out with the autoplay. So let's go back into settings, advanced code injection, and I'm going to enable this code once more. And let's open this up and take a look at what goes on here. All right, so we have this coming towards us and moving slightly downwards. You can see how with the autoplay, this creates a really cool sort of immersive effect for the auto list that I'm sure your client is going to absolutely love. All right, my friend, and there you have it. That's how you can create a Ken Burns effect for auto layout of banner slideshows in 7.1. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did making it. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on the rest of the days of this series, and I will see you tomorrow.